Hi, uh, my name is Ben. Welcome to Retrosect in Tewkesbury. First things that you will see are the variety of computers and things that I've got set up there. We've got a Mega Drive 2, uh, a NES. I've also got a, a couple of old PCs set up. Apparently Worms is, uh, is what I've had going on there. A little bit of uh, retro computer hardware in the corner there. When I was growing up, after I kind of had done Game Boys and Super Nintendos, I became a really big PC gamer. Over here towards the counter, um, obviously the, you know, the main event in the shop, everything from NES and Master System, GameCube, PlayStation, Xbox. wall of, of consoles for sale there. Along with the, the handheld consoles, Game Boys, Atari Lynxes, Game Gears. In this cabinet I've got pre-Game Boy portable consoles, so uh, Grandstand and Tomy. If you're mid-30s or older you might know what it is, if you're not it's probably way over your head. But these are all the things that came in the kind of early to mid-80s before uh, handheld consoles became a thing. So down this aisle here, PC games, big box games, some more modern stuff, a little bit of Amiga at the bottom there. remote control cars. I love the box art on a lot of these things, so I've bought things based on what I like and hope that other people have similar tastes. Various toys and plushes here. Remember, remember mini boglins? Is that, yeah. <laughs> Dancing Coke cans. Uh, monsters in my pocket. Bucky O'Hare, all of the stuff that I was growing up, early 90s mostly, I suppose, um, loving as a kid, I've gone back and bought way too much of it again. In this cabinet here, I've got quite a range of game watches and other LCD Casio watches and things, along with a, a range of calculators. And again, that's things that I've bought because I like how they look. Around this side, past the most modern games I've got in the shop, so original Xbox, GameCube, PS2, got quite a good range of that. There is seemingly an increasing collector's market for VHS. I think everyone's rebelling against Netflix and Amazon Prime, where you pay these monthly fees and you don't get a, a physical product in return. I've sold quite a few, well, more VHS than I ever thought I would, would sell when I... Uh, open the place. I do check all of the VHSs and I do sell VHS players uh, if you want to actually watch uh, something that you can't find on Netflix or you know you don't want to pay a tenner for an Amazon Prime. All of the uh, the clothes I've got here are, uh, are obviously retro for one reason or another but uh, some pretty special stuff. Original Nissan Le Mans team jacket. Nintendo Power baseball jacket, Simpson shoes. If only I was a size four, they wouldn't actually be for sale. I would just wear those. Bit of retro tech, generally smaller CRT TVs, um, little miniature ones, just again, because they're cool looking things. Variety of audio. I check everything uh, that I put out from games consoles to audio to TVs, all of it's tested. Cassettes, again, a surprising collector's market. You know, things like Iron Maiden cassettes are pretty hard to come by now, so 15 quid for cassettes. You, you would think I'm mad, but they're more than that on eBay. <laughs> Um, this is just a little cabinet with some of my special game stuff in. If anyone knows anything about this bag, please, please tell me about it. Wireless Super Nintendo controllers, Japanese modified GameCube, so yeah, all the kind of oddity stuff that I've got. I 
original Sega pinball backer. Uh, so that was off the, the Sega Viper driving pinball game in the US. I've never seen the game over here, but I randomly came across that at a car boot sale. So that was the quickest buy I've ever made. Um, some original quad posters for uh, cinema releases of War Games and Police Academy. So in here is my car show. If anyone uh, is a fan of the original Gran Turismo games, this was the Gran Turismo starter car. Uh, it's a Suzuki Alto Works RS 550cc turbo. So it's basically a, a road legal go-kart. Um, this is a Lancia Delta, not the famous Rally Integrale version. This is a bog standard LX, but it's a very pretty, very low mileage, really nice example. This one here is an Alpine GTA. People sometimes call it the French 911 because the engine's in the back rather than the front. Um, this is a uh, Citroen BX, which I'm sure loads of people will recognize, but this is the 4x4 GTI, so it's the kind of the top BX that you could get back in the early 90s um, with the up and down suspension, lots of angles, beautiful thing. Fiat X19, probably one of the few that you'll ever see that is, well, I'm going to say it, rust free. <laughs> These are notorious for rusting into the ground, but this one is a proper survivor um, that has not had loads of welding done to it. It is original, but it's really nice. Uh, this is my car that I bought originally to sell and kind of fell in love with a bit much. So currently it's sitting here just looking pretty, but it's very hollow under there because there's no engine in it. Um, the engine is currently being rebuilt at huge expense, but after that I'll be able to then use it as my kind of show car and go to events and uh, show off a little bit. 1984 Nissan Skyline. RSX Turbo C Iron Mask. Other than that, I've got car audio, retro, period correct stuff. Some of it has been converted to have Bluetooth connectivity. If you're looking for an old badge for a car, I might have it. <laughs> In the late 70s and the 80s, my dad was working at uh, Car Magazine, uh, doing all of the kind of design. He was the art editor and then art director. So I've got all of the original copies of car magazine from actually before my dad started 73 all the way up to 87 and then some original uh, layouts and pencil drawings and designs that they've done for the original front covers it's a part of automotive journalism history that I wanted to make sure was being displayed rather than being kept in my dad's attic so the last thing you might have noticed as we've been going around I've got this little corner set up here twin Samsung CRTs at the moment, I've got it set up with a Pandora arcade box with 5,000 or something games on it. All the games you could ever think of. And currently, Need for Speed Underground with a wheel. It seems to be very popular. I remember selling that game new when I worked in Game Station way, way back. Good to have something for people to play on. People come in, particularly on a Saturday. Yeah, everyone's welcome to come and, come and have a play on that as well. I found this place at the tail end of last year. Got the keys in May and I've been working furiously on my own uh, to get it opened. It opened in uh, on August the 12th this year. I essentially found that although I wanted to open a car showroom, my passions for all sorts of retro stuff really came to the surface during COVID. I wanted to have a bit of everything, it could be games or the toys or the, the audio stuff. In Retrosex, uh, as well as selling all this lovely stuff, I also buy and exchange uh, retro items as well. Uh, predominantly the games and games consoles but I am open to buying anything of this period. If there's something that you've see in, seen in the video and you think oh I've got something like that in the loft then dig it out because it may well be worth something now and if you're not looking to sell it I'm very happy to appraise items as well so you can always send pictures to me on Instagram or Facebook or send me an email uh, I'm very happy to tell you what it's worth or what I would sell it for give you more information about it if you don't know enough yourself yeah if you've got anything that you want to want to bring in then uh, just get in touch with me on social media the only things uh, in this shop that aren't for sale are things behind the counter. That's my little collector's area. Deliberately kept quite small so that I can't have loads of stuff that's not for sale. So basically that and my BBC Micro in the corner are the only things that aren't for sale. Everything else in the video that you've seen is most certainly for sale. <laughs>